السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Today inshallah we're going to solve Cambridge exam May June 2022 paper 61 Let's start it Question 1 The apparatus in the diagram was used to show that when a candle is burned both water and carbon dioxide are formed Here we are burning the candle and the gases produced passed through this apparatus using a suction bump as shown here at the first part, the gas passed through this U-tube placed in an uh, ice speaker. Then it passes here through solution Z. First, name the items labeled W and X. W is a funnel and X is a boiling tube or a test tube. Suggest why ice is placed around the U-tube. Here, when the gas is passed, it contains steam or water vapor so the ice is used to cool the steam and condense it into water so the liquid formed here is water describe how to test that the liquid collected in the youtube and you can show that it it is water we will measure the boiling point this is the test for pure water. If the boiling point is sharp 100 degrees Celsius, so this liquid is water. Solution Z is used to show that carbon dioxide gas is produced. So identify solution Z. Solution Z here, when carbon dioxide gas produced, this is a test for carbon dioxide. So solution Z is lime water or calcium hydroxide solution, which turn to milky or cloudy when carbon dioxide gas passes due to the formation of insoluble calcium carbonate so this is a test for carbon dioxide gas and solution z is lime water both water and carbon dioxide were made so identify one element that must be in the compound that makes up the candle because carbon dioxide produced so one of the components of the candle has to be carbon and because water is produced, of course, the candle uh, has hydrogen. He need only one element, so you can write either carbon or hydrogen. Describe how the apparatus could be changed to test if sulfur dioxide gas is made from this uh, candle also. And give an observation if sulfur dioxide gas is made. First, we will change the apparatus, adding acidified potassium manganese solution. We can add it here, like solution Z, in another boiling tube. And the acidified potassium manganate is used to test for sulfur dioxide gas. When sulfur dioxide gas passes, the purple color of the uh, potassium manganate change into colorless. So this is the observation, the color change from purple to colorless. This is the test for sulfur dioxide gas. Question 2. A student investigate the rate in which hydrogen gas is made when magnesium reacts with two different solutions of hydrochloric acid. We have two different solutions, solution C and solution D, with two different concentrations. The dilute hydrochloric acid is in excess in both experiments. Here is the apparatus used. Dilute hydrochloric acid in the flask and the flask connected to a rubber delivery tube. Then the gas collect here in inverted measuring cylinder. The steps for the experiment is as follows. The, we are using measuring cylinder to measure 50 cm cube of dilute hydrochloric acid, C, and we will put it in the conical flask. We then measure the initial temperature of the acid using thermometer. We will add 5 cm length of magnesium ribbon and quickly close the pump of the conical flask. We measured the volume of the gas collected in the measuring cylinder every 20 seconds for 160 seconds. Then we will record the final temperature of the hydrochloric acid after the experiment has finished. Here is the reading of the thermometer. The initial reading 
of hydrochloric acid C was 25, then the final reading was, was 34. And here is the volume of gas collected every 20 seconds, 27, 48, 65, 78, then 86, 89, then it reached to a constant reading 90 centimeter cube after 140 seconds. We will repeat the experiment using 50 centimeter cube of the dilute hydrochloric acid D. Again, we will measure the initial reading and the final reading of the thermometer. Here, the initial reading is 25.5 and the final reading is 31. And again, we will measure the volume of the gas collected every 20 seconds. As we can see here, the rate of formation of uh, hydrogen gas is slower than in the first experiment and it didn't reach to a plateau till the, we finish 160 seconds. Here we want to draw the graph for the two experiments. Complete a suitable scale on the y-axis, then plot your results for experiment 1 and experiment 2. You have to draw a smooth line graph and both lines should pass through the origin and clearly label your lines. Make sure to cover all the points needed to get the full mark for the graph. Here first I choose a suitable scale for the y-axis, then we draw the smooth line for experiment 1 and for experiment 2. From your graph, deduce the volume of the gas that was collected after 50 seconds in experiment 2. You have to work clearly on the grid how you work it out your answer. So we will go to the x-axis, clearly point 50 seconds, then go upward to meet the curve for experiment 2 and determine the volume in centimeter cube. Here it's 28 centimeter cube, so you have to show your work on the grid clearly to tick these three marks. It, the volume of the gas is 28 centimeter cube. Here, explain what can be deduced about the concentration of dilute hydrochloric acid C and, dilution and dilute hydrochloric acid D. So we will refer back to the results. Hydrochloric acid C, the volume of the gas collected is higher than the volume of gas collected in case of hydrochloric acid D, so we can deduce that the solution C is more concentrated than solution D because the rate of reaction is faster. As we know, the increasing the concentration will increase the rate of reaction, so we can find here the reaction rate is higher than solution D. State what happened to the temperature of the dilute hydrochloric acid during experiment 1. During experiment 1, the temperature rises from 25 to 34, so the temperature of the solution increases. State what effect this temperature can change on the total volume of gas made when the reaction has finished. Of course, this temperature is due to that the reaction is exothermic, but it will have no effect on the volume of the gas collected, so the answer is no effect. Describe a change that can be made to the apparatus or reagent to reduce the temperature change of the acid in experiment 1. We can use a cold water bath to decrease the temperature of hydrochloric acid. So we will put the, the flask in a cold water bath. Suggest why it is important to replace the bung in the conical flask immediately after adding magnesium ribbon. When, the, when we add the magnesium ribbon, the reaction immediately starts and hydrogen gas start to produce so we have to replace the bung immediately to its position to reduce the loss or the escape of the gas. State the advantage of measuring the volume of the gas collected every 10 seconds rather than every 20 seconds. When we measure the volume every 10 seconds we will have more reading so more points to plot the graph and the graph will be better and smoother graph 
and of course the uh, results will be more reliable. Question 3. We have solid E and solution F were analyzed. Solid E was ammonium sulfate and here is the formula of ammonium sulfate. First we will start with test on solid E. Solid E was dissolved in water to form solution E. Then we will divide it into three test tubes. The first test tube we will add sodium hydroxide. Then we will warm the test tube. Adding sodium hydroxide to ammonium salt. This is the test for ammonium ion. So when heating ammonium sulfate with sodium hydroxide, ammonia gas will produce. So the test for the gas produce a red litmus paper. Your observation will be a red litmus paper change into blue. And the gas is ammonia, as you can see here from the equation. This is the test, how to test for ammonium ion. Adding sodium hydroxide, warm ammonia gas will produce. To the second portion of solution E, we will add dilute nitric acid followed by few drops of aqueous silver nitrate. Silver nitrate is a reagent used to test for halide ions, chloride, bromide, and iodide. Here, we have only ammonium ions and sulfate ions, so there will be no change. To the third portion, we will add 1 cm dilute nitric acid followed by few drops of aqueous barium nitrate. Barium is used to test for sulfate ions so here we have ammonium sulfate sulfate ion is present so ammonium sulfate will react with barium nitrate to produce barium sulfate which is a white precipitate so the observation will be white precipitate then test for solution f to solution f divided into two equal portions and the first portion, we will add strip of universal indicator paper and the universal indicator paper turns orange. That means this solution F is a weak acid. It gives orange color with the universal indicator paper and this is the color for the weak acid. For the second portion of solution F, we will add solid sodium carbonate in the boiling tube and test for the gas produced. We know that carbonates react with the acid to produce carbon dioxide gas, so the observation is effervescence and the solid disappears. We will test for the gas produced using lime water and it turns milky. That indicates that the gas produced is carbon dioxide gas, which is the gas produced when carbonate reacts with acid. So deduce the pH of solution F, as we know here from the, the orange color, it's a weak acid, so we can write the pH 5. Identify the positive ion in solution F. Here, solution F is an acid, so the positive ion responsible for all the reaction of the acid is proton or the hydrogen ion. Question 4, writing experiment. We have a sample of muddy river water. Contain water, some dissolved solids, and insoluble solid mud. You have to plan an investigation to find the concentration of the dissolved solid in gram per decimeter cube in the river water. In your answer, you should state how you will work out this concentration of the dissolved solid. So you have to show your calculations. You are provide you are provided with a sample less than one decimeter cube of the muddy river water and all common laboratory apparatus. So the first step will be measure a certain volume of the river water using a measuring cylinder. After we have a sa this sample in the measuring cylinder, we will filter the water to remove the insoluble solid mud. The insoluble solid mud will be a residue on the filter paper and we will have the filtrate which is contained the dissolved solids. So we will place the filtrate in an evaporating basin, then we will heat to evaporate the water. After heating, we will weigh the solid in the basin, then heat it again 
reweigh it until reach a condensate mass. Reaching a condensate mass means all water have been evaporated and this is the, the mass of the solid only. So it is very important here to reach that, uh, to reach a constant mass or and to write that we will heat and reweigh until reach a constant mass. That means all the water is evaporated. Then after that, we will find the mass of the solid and we want to calculate the concentration of this dissolved solid. So in our sample, First, we will convert the volume of the sample into decimeter because he wanted the concentration in decimeter cube. And I will convert my, my sample into decimeter by dividing by thousand. And this mass of the solid present in the sample, we will find the mass of the solid present in one decimeter cube because he is asking to calculate the concentration in gram per decimeter cube. So this is the mass present in my sample volume and I will calculate it in one decimeter cube. So the concentration of the dissolved solid will be the mass multiplied by the by thousand divided by the my sample volume and the answer will be in gram per decimeter cube. As you can see it's a simple cross multiplication and you have to give him the formula of how you work out the concentration of the dissolved solid in your sample. Now we reach to the end of our exam. Like the video and subscribe for the channel to receive all the updates. Comment down below if you have any question. Thank you for watching. Wish you all best of luck.